Is your Gridfinity collection overflowing? Don't let a lack of space limit your organization. Let's expand upwards with Homewrecker, the universal modular rack builder. Today, I'm gonna show you how. If you missed my intro video on Homewrecker, the modular system for building shelves, racks and more, I've linked it down in the description. Today, we're diving straight into one of its extensions, Gridfinity Shelves. Now, if you're not interested in the why and what if and just want to start printing, skip ahead to the how to print section now. Otherwise, stick around for the features and limitations. The secret sauce with the Gridfinity shelves is the Parametric Model Maker, in short PMM. At its core, this model is a customizable Gridfinity base plate engineered to map perfectly onto a Homewrecker core frame. You can access the PMM directly via the model on MakerWorld to customize and generate your perfect grid size in seconds. The next feature is an economical one. Depending on how big a shelf gets, its ribs will also grow in height and strength to increase stability on bigger shelves and material savings on smaller ones. For the last feature, you gotta look closely. Can you see it? The shelf doesn't overlap here on the y-axis like it does on the other one. The reason is simple. The overlapping area blocks the entire support from placing home record connectors. So it wouldn't be possible to create differently sized shelves like on this showcase. So I left some space to be able to do exactly this. And to avoid the downside of less stability due to missing overlap, I created separate stabilizers to support the shelf where it's needed most. To be perfectly candid, there's also some downsides I don't want to withhold. Since Homewrecker and Gridfinity have different base units, you will always have small amounts of unused space around the perimeter, always depending on how they align at the current configuration. And there's no continuous grids. Meaning you can't snap shelf to shelf to create one giant seamless Gridfinity base plate. Each shelf is bound to its individual home record frame. It actually broke my mind a little bit thinking of a continuous pattern. But never say never, I already got something in mind. Lastly, one small annoyance. If you customize your shelf by Gridfinity units, you need to use this mapping table to find the corresponding home record support units. As of now, the PMM doesn't allow you to imprint text parameters on to models. But remember, this is only the first iteration of the shelf. With time and your input, we'll definitely get better here. So don't hold back and spill the beans in the comments. As with most of my models, there's always a showcase profile which is ready to print. But the Gridfinity shelf also allows you to go beyond and customize a shelf to your needs using the Parametric Model Maker. But let's start with the showcase model as it has two advantages. It's a batteries included profile which contains all my favorite settings to guarantee a flawless print and good stability. Ah, I can already see how this guarantee will backfire somewhere in the future. It also contains the necessary home wrecker core parts to build the rack itself. And it's also the reference for the assembly guide PDF. So if you're happy with what you see here, just go ahead and print yourself a shelf. Ooh, <laughs> that rhymes. Then you can just skip to the how to assemble part. Now let's customize yourself a shelf. That rhymes again. By using the PMM. Advantage, you get exactly what you want. This advantage, you have to find yourself the proper core parts to create the required frame. Shouldn't be that hard, but can get tedious. I added a printing guide PDF to the model on MakerWorld, which contains all info on how to map Gridfinity units to Homewrecker units, so you know exactly what supports to print to create the perfect frame for your shelf. Now, let me walk you through the entire customization process. First, we start in the PMM. Click on the link in the description or search on MakerWorld for Gridfinity Shelf for Homewrecker. And you should end up on a page looking like this. Click on Customize and wait for the PMM to open. Now you are presented with a default size shelf as well as stabilizers for the Y-axis. Single and double to allow side-by-side -side shelves. First, we have our size parameters, grid X and grid Y. These are desired Gridfinity units maxed out at 20. Now watch what happens when I set it to 10x10 and click Generate. Nothing changed. That's because of my first safety net, so you don't exceed the maximum printable area and generate yourself an unprintable model. That safety net is tied to the next two parameters, max printing width and depth. 
They default to 256mm, which fits most bamboo machines. If I switch the profile down to 180mm for an A1 Mini, for example, and click on Generate, the shelf automatically shrinks to a printable size. You can go up to 400mm in sight length here. If you think that's not enough for your specific godlike printer, let me know and I'll adapt the customizer. Since I only want to print a small showcase for the sake of this video, and I also have this useless cube lying around from my last video, why not turn the tables and let Homewrecker units lead the way? In this case, I know that my cube is made out of X8 supports, so I can just change the fit to HR parameter from 0 to 1. Yes, uh, booleans are not a thing in Fusion 360. This will now ignore the grid X and grid Y parameters and instead use the HR units X and Y parameters to size the shelf. Meaning, the customizer will try to fit as many Gridfinity cells into the shelf as there is space. So let's set the HR units to 8 and 8 and click on generate. <laughs> Rhymes again. What a day! As you can see now, the shelf got even smaller and shrunk to a 2x2 grid but with lids along the y-axis to fill the requested frame entirely. If you want a larger or smaller stabilizer, you can change the parameter y stabilizer units from 0 to the desired amount of homewrecker units. Just be aware, this one's effectively limited by the shelf size to not render unusable when set too big. In this case, you can see it's limited at 6HR units. Now that I'm happy with the result, let's download this as 3mf file and open up the slicer. There's one crucial step. Select the shelf and click split to objects. If you skip this, the slicer won't recognize the separate parts from the Fusion 360 export and you won't be able to arrange the objects accordingly. This single click is the fix. Let's hit arrange and then print. I already have my cube to mount the shelf on, but you guys need to get the proper parts yet. So let's head over to the core model by clicking either one of the links in the description or in the shelf model or by searching for Homewrecker Core on Makerworld. You'll find it, I promise. Click on open with Bamboo Studio and after a short loading time, you'll be presented with all the core parts which currently exist. To make this quick and expandable, I'd choose the following. Four X8 supports and four 3D four-way connectors. This allows you to go up or down infinitely. If you also want to scale to the sides, choose 3D five-way connectors instead. It's up to you. In the end, it's four supports and four connectors to give you a single level of shelf. And in case this is already the second shelf level, you'll need four vertical supports to stack it onto the last one. To make it easy, let's just add another 4x8 supports here and we're good. Print it, wait, done. And don't forget to print a plate of lock pins. Now we can finally come to the assembly. When assembling racks, I can generally advise to start building one dimension after the other. Meaning, start with simple lines like mounting the horizontal x-axis supports onto the connectors. Then tackle the second dimension by just sliding in the y-axis supports. Now you can place the shelf onto the frame and lock everything in place using the pins. Et voila! A Gridfinity shelf. You can now simply create another level by printing this plate again. And this can go on and on until it might collapse. Never tested that yet. Maybe something for a future video. However, if you want to scale to the sides, just exchange the connectors from four to five ways. Then you can also make use of this nifty two-way stabilizer. As with every print, every time, Clean your print bed before printing. Slightest impurities in combination with an aging build plate can cause print failures or warping, even with PLA, so stay clean. I, for one, have some microfiber towel and isopropyl alcohol besides my printers to clean the beds before every print. And every once in a while, I give them a proper wash as well. Do not change the printing orientation. Every part is already ideally oriented for maximum stability and function. If you rotate them, I cannot guarantee they'll fit or hold up. There's for sure more pitfalls which I forgot to mention, so please be so kind and remind us of them down in the comments below. There you have it! Customizable Gridfinity shelves for Homewrecker. As mentioned, you can find them on Makerworld. I put a link in the description. I hope you find them as useful as I do. But now it's your turn. Do you think they can be useful for you or are they just wasting too much space because of the rack overhead? Let me know 
in the comments below. Next time, I'll introduce a completely new model, the full extension drawers. So if you don't want to miss those, I recommend you subscribe now. Till next time, keep on wrecking. <laughs> yeah, that's the new catchphrase, get used to it. <laughs> keep on wrecking. Holy cow, you guys. I mean, I'm truly overwhelmed. Do, do you see that? Do you see what I see? I mean, either the YouTube algorithm is completely broken or you guys really liked my last video on the Homewrecker introduction. Um, yeah, I hope I can keep up with the expectation. I, I don't know. I hope so. Um, God, I don't know. Stability, 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 stability. stability. I really don't know. <laughs> Max printing width and depth, 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 depth. Because I don't know if I say stabilize, stabilize. I recommend you subscribe now. Clicky, clicky. Yeah. Oh god, this bad.